Hi, my name is Mohammed Farahani and I'm a PhD student at CUHK. In this video, I'm going to present a paper about pattern matching on encrypted data by Anis Bukekria and his colleagues. In this presentation, first I'm going to go over the definitions using the problem statement and challenges of the set problem. Then I'm going to go over the existing problems, existing solutions and their limitations. Then I'm going to jump into the proposed solution, first stating some key concepts that may help to better understand the paper, then illustrating the security model used, the syntax of the proposed construction, and then the evaluation at the end. Then I'm going to include my opinions and some potential future works that I think may help to build upon this paper. You can find the link to the paper and the presentation by the authors at the Asia Crypt 2020 in the description. So let's jump right into it. First, what is encrypted data? Encrypted data means we have a data that some entities should have access and other entities should not have any access to the data. One example of that would be end-to-end -end encryption in the 20s, they try to communicate to each other. They have some secret keys and public keys. They're communicating over a public channel, for example, internet. But they don't want other people uh, eavesdrop what they're communicating. The other example would be databases, that we're concerned about the privacy of our data or our identification. identification. Next, pattern matching. What is pattern matching? It simply means you want to be able to check if some patterns exist in the stream data. You want to search for some patterns. You want to search for some substrings in our database. So it doesn't matter that if the sender is an entity or if there is a database. One example of pattern matching is if you want to check for any malicious attack uh, or you want to do some parental control over the stream or simply we want to search or we want to do some simple uh, functions on the database to check for something. For example, on a, on a medical database, we want to check for how many patients uh, were in the medical center, for example, over the past week, but we don't want any exposure of the uh, private data over this checking. And next, the privacy preserving. As I said, we don't want to expose any more information than needed. Means we don't want to allow any attacker to use the added system for the pattern matching to be able to perform any attack on the receiver. So the challenges of the set problem consist of three main points. First, privacy. Some of the existing solutions have pattern leakage, meaning the, the ciphertext or the keys have some information about the patterns and some adversaries can gain information about the patterns and use that in malicious ways. Or some of them have data leakage through the, through the chapters for the patterns. Next, the practicality. Uh, the end goal of the pattern matching would be doing real-time pattern matching and data streams, meaning we can't have a huge computational overhead on the user side, for example, on a mobile phone. And also we can't have a huge memory consumption by the keys or the trapdoors or the ciphertext. And then the flexibility. Uh, we don't want to fix our patterns. We want to be able to add patterns later on. We want to have the patterns with different or yeah, with different length. 
that's why this paper tries to propose a solution to be able to solve all of them to be able to be the first to solve all of them so the challenge is on some recent solutions you can see here and this way are at on the proposed construction is better than most of them on most of the aspects so first of all as i said we don't want to have a memory con a huge memory consumption or a huge complexity so you can see here all of them has some potential uh, memory consumption for example as blind by some and blind ideas they have huge cipher size SESD as a state of the art has a huge encryption key size or pretty uh, predicate encryption also has huge encryption key size and also the number of trapdoors. Next, we want to have a reliable system. So some of them, like blind box and blind ideas, they have non-negligible false positives that we cannot trust easily. And just as an icing of the cake, we want to be able to uh, check for arbitrary number of trap to, uh, number of patterns with arbitrary length so that's why you can see here the proposed solution tries to solve all of them to be the, to be able to be the first related works as i mentioned before can be categorized to three parts First, uh, PETs or privacy enhancing technology such as homomorphic encryption and multi-party computations. These are some of the examples of them. Next, we have hidden vector encryption or HVE, worked by Bonnet and Waters, and searchable encryption, symmetric and asymmetric, that are the most popular in the recent literature. Blind box, blind ideas, and SEST are all of them uh, asymmetric searchable encryptions. The limitations of the set uh, solutions by this uh, categorization multi party computation means we uh, diversify our computation on the uh, different parties that are included in the system means we have an overhead for our consumers. Some computations should be done on the consumer's PC or systems. This means multiple interactions between multiple parties, meaning high communication cost. Blind by some blind ideas, uh, searchable encryptions, they only uh, allow fixed length patterns and they have high false negatives due, due to cases that you uh, that the pattern pans over two segments. And predicted predicted encryption, they use each character as an attribute for each segment. It means there is a need for one secret key and one predicate for any pair of pattern and offset. This means a huge load of secret keys and SEST that stands for searchable encryption with shiftable trapdoors they allow arbitrary pattern length for any offset and they're secure but they have pattern leakage through the ciphertext and also the public key size is linear to the data size so as an example for a one gigabyte data it needs eight terabytes public key yeah so main contributions of the paper is to uh, provide or introduce two new constructions based on the secret uh, one on uh, on symmetric and one on asymmetric uh, channels 
they provide foreign security analysis to prove the security on, under different scenarios. And also they introduced new approaches for both symmetric and also attribute-based encryption to improve the efficiency of the implementation. The system architecture that they used in the paper is, uh, consists of four entities, naming receiver, sender, service provider, and the pattern provider. The receiver simply is a user that has a key to the encrypted data. The center is, sender is someone providing a data stream. The pattern provider is uh, an entity providing some patterns to be checked. And the service provider is some uh, one that just detect uh, that just yeah just detects. So in this architecture, they assume the pattern provider and the service provider are both honest but curious, meaning uh, they don't do malicious malicious things, but they are curious to find out any possible information about other entities. But the sender is assumed to be untrusted. We don't know the sender. That's all. Next, some key concepts. In order to better understand the syntax and also the security analysis of these constructions, first we need to know bilinear groups and also the Diffie-Hellman problem and the variant that they use in the paper. So bilinear groups consist of five elements, G1, G2, G, T, P, and E. P is a large prime number, G1 and G2, and also G, T are cyclic groups of order P. E is a pairing or a map from G1 and G2 to G, T that should have some properties. First, bilinearity. Second, non-degeneracy, and also it should be efficiently computable. In this paper, they use the type 3 of bilinear groups, meaning asymmetry. So there is no efficiently computable isomorphism between G1 and G2. So G1 and G2 are two separate groups. Next, we have GDH problem. The, the GDH problem for bilinear planes is similar to the original DH problem, Diffie-Hellman problem. The same as the goal is same. We want to see if the value is random or is not. An interactive variant is just a variant that allows the simulator to add each query to the oracle. This dynamic property uh, makes the problem or makes the system less secure, but at the same time, uh, we can have more flexibility in our system or in our game, so to say. <clears throat> security requirements or security model used in the paper consists of three parts, mainly. Data indistinguishability, meaning the pattern provider and the service provider that they don't have any access to the data should not have be, should not be able to forge any data or decrypt any, any encrypted data. So the game for data in this security is simple. The adversary can query any uh, trapdoor for query trapdoors for any desired pattern, and then it cha uh, challenge the challenger chooses two data streams and then has to guess which one is encrypted. Next, we have pattern distinguishability. It's the same. No one other than the pattern provider should know anything about the patterns, meaning any adversary can ask for trapdoors, but they cannot find the, trap, uh, find the patterns from the trapdoors. And then, uh, obviously, the correctness, meaning if the pattern exists, the probability should be 1. If the pattern doesn't exist, the probability should be negligible. The intuition behind the proposed solution is simple. 
it's based on that the pattern size is small uh, relative to the data size. You have a huge data size, but the patterns are small fragments of the data. So it's reasonable to assume that we can segment the data to smaller sizes. So then we have uh, we would be able to check or search for patterns in smaller fragments. So then we would fragment uh, they will fragment the data to smaller parts, and then to cover uh, the weakness of blind IDS and blind box, they add more fragments to have overlap. Means okay. First, we have the frag the original fragments, and just to cover the the patterns that would pan over two fragments, half there, half there, we would add these fragments as well. Simple. So the general <laughs> construction of the proposed solution consists of five basic parts. Setup, key generation, encryption, trap to issue, and test. Setup is to just set up the bilinear environment, meaning generating the environment, generating the groups, and just passing the parameters to the next systems. The key generation is using using that information or that those parameters to first generate the encryption key, both secret or public encryption keys, and also the trapdoor generation key used to issue trapdoors. The encryption is simple, just encrypting the data using the encryption key. Trapdoor issue is the same as the encryption, but only for patterns and trapdoors. And test is to use the pairing map to check if a pattern exists in a ciphertext. First, the key generation. The key generation is simple. We have the receiver generating the secret key for itself, then using the secret key to generating the public key for the sender. This public key uh, consists of two parts. We can say one part is a basis, and the other part is the projection of each symbol of the alphabet on the basis. The other part of the key generation is the trapdoor key generation. So we have the key for the trapdoor generation that is provided to the pattern provider to be able to issue trapdoors for any arbitrary patterns. We can say that this key is a randomized projection of symbols of the alphabet on the basis. This random part here is to just avoid the reforgeability or uh, yeah the forgeability of the trapdoors. The encryption is simple. We have the encryption key, then we choose some random scalars for each fragment. So what we do at the encryption is simple. At each fragment, we choose a random scalar to avoid the frequency attacks, then each symbol based on the position in that fragment would be encrypted. It is uh, not, uh, notable that some symbols exist in two fragments, some in one. It doesn't matter. If uh, the symbol exists in two, it gets two different sets of ciphertext. If it exists in one, just one set. So if the symbol at sigma is located at the index i in the fragment, the encryption of that symbol would be two parts, ci and c prim i. Then the chapter generation is also similar. If we have a pattern of arbitrary length to issue a trapdoor, we have to issue the trapdoor for each possible shift of the pattern in the fragments. 
So for each shift, we choose a random scalar to avoid the forgeability. And then for any offset of the pattern in the fragment, the tab door is like this. Don't worry about the details. It's something like a basis and a value. Then to test if a pattern exists in a set index of a set uh, fragment, what we do is, okay, we have a pattern of length L and we have the trapdoors of that issued before. Then we want to check in any fragment at any offset. We have the ciphertext. The matching condition would be applying the bilinear map for E on both the ciphertext and the trapdoor. It's notable that at this point, the only information that the service provider has access to is these two values that are random looking elements of GT. So that's an intuition behind that the service provider would not be able to find any more information about the patterns. The evaluation on this uh, proposed solution on different aspects shows promising and good results. For example, in the aspect of complexity, the public parameter size, like a uh, key size, is linear to the fragment size and is independent of the data size. Or the chapter generation is linear to fragment size and pattern length and again independent of data size. The search complexity is linear to the data size and independent of the pattern length and fragment size and number of the patterns and anything later related to the patterns. It means uh, it is optimized in a way that there is no need for more complexity. And it's more correct than before. There's still some false positives, but it's negligible. On the numerical side, they did some empirical tests and empirical experiments using a rel uh, the uh, library of relic cryptography, using BN curve, and doing this on a byte string alphabet so, uh, set. And all of that, all of the experiments done on a V4 uh, processor machine. So first, secret key size is linear to the data size. And for a alphabet of byte string, it's about 17 kilobytes. Public key size would be linear to the maximum length of the patterns and for uh, uh, if the maximum length of the pattern is about 52, it's just seven kilobytes. Trapdoor key size, linear to the data size uh, and the square of the maximum length. So for the set settings, it's about one megabyte. Trapdoor sizes is just linear to the length of the patterns. And if you just add up all the patterns, for example, in the uh, Snort application, there would be more than 6,000 patterns that adds up to 19 megabytes. Ciphertext size is linear to the data size. The encryption complexity is linear to the data size. That means on the set machine, the throughput of the encryption system would be 25 kilobytes per second. Detection of a complex, the detection complexity is also linear to the data size. And on the set machine, again, the throughput is about 11 kilobytes per second. On this slide, uh, we have the numerical comparisons between the state-of-the-art SEST and the, set, and the proposed constructions. So the proposed constructions are blue and red, so you can see in two different scenarios of white level search and bit level search, uh, there is a significant difference between the latency of 
two algorithms, meaning the proposed algorithm is significant, significantly more optimized and better for larger data streams. So to conclude, uh, the paper pro uh, proposed two searchable encryption systems that has a, a that can allow arbitrary length patterns to be matched. They are practical in a wide range of applications or ac more accurately compared to existing state of the art. They're closer to real time pattern matching, but they still have high complexity for larger data streams. So in some applications, that we need real-time pattern matching and data stream is uh, bigger than, I don't know, 25 kilobyte per second, this is not still enough. The proposed uh, structures or constructions are secure in various aspects. They have pattern and data unforgeability by different entities. The paper provides a clear definition and proof for the security, but in my, op uh, in my opinion, uh, the game structures are a bit loose, so they may not be reasonable or applicable at all scenarios. Future works can be consist of, first, adding more functionalities rather than only matching. So for example, if you want to do uh, some arithmetic on a database, for example, we have a medical database that we want to do some first search for patients with, uh, I don't know, uh, a disease. And then we want to do some arithmetics on them without exposing any more information about the patients. Or we want to check for similarities instead of exact patterns. The other thing would be how to optimize this implementation so we can have more throughput. For example, uh, can we propose a new bilinear group that has less complexity but still is secure enough for the set uh, security requirements? Yeah, this was the video for the presentation for the project of uh, my course, Applied Cryptography. Thank you for listening and yeah, hope you have a good day.